Here. Thank you. City Manager Babinick. Here. City Attorney Hearn. Present. Thank you. So if everybody would be kind enough to rise, uh, you can have a moment of silence and who's ever honor you'd like, uh, mine will be in the honor of George Floyd. Thank you very much. Uh, Deborah, would you be kind enough to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance today? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right. Very good. Thank you. And whenever you'd like, Deborah, you can get yourself a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see everybody. Uh, I was glad that we were able to make the uh, Coral Springs High School parade today. I think it was very special, uh, needed. And Commissioner Simmons, thank you for being a teacher there for so many years. Uh, teachers, including you, you are my favorite professional and you've done so much for our children over the years. I can't thank you enough. So thanks for being on our team and thanks for teaching our kids. So next, uh, we have the virtual meeting statement. John, if you would uh, be kind enough to read that in full. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we are reconvening our meeting from nine o'clock, as we're all aware. And we are due to the ongoing state of emergency and the recommendations from all public health authorities. The city of Coral Springs uh, is having a virtual meeting. It's consistent with the governor's executive orders of 2020-69 and 2021-12 and Coral Springs Resolution 2020-16. Uh, we have several ways that we have uh, kept with the spirit and the requirements of the Sunshine Law and those general orders or those emergency orders during this unprecedented time. So therefore we have available for viewing on live TV, several different ways, Blue Stream, channel 725, channels 25 and 25.7. AT&T Uverse, channel 99, online at coralsprings.org backslash city TV and can be heard live on city radio 1670 AM. For those individuals who may not have access, we do have access physically at City Hall outside by the garage at 9500 West Sample Road. If you plan to attend, please practice social distancing, not standing closer than six feet to those around you and wear a mask. Public comment will be received by phone and email. The local call-in number is 954-344-5900. You can call that now. To submit written public comment, please complete the form located at coralsprings.org backslash public comment. Um, and Mayor, the meeting is yours. Great. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. Thank Next you. on uh, the agenda is our public comment. Deborah, are there any signed speakers? Mayor, we have four signed speakers. Two will be online and two I'll read into the record. And so I will turn it over now to Robert. He'll bring up our first caller. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon, Robert. It takes about 40 seconds to connect. How about if I take this time to read the first uh, it is from Rebecca Calgrove of 9407 Northwest 42nd Street in Sunrise. I wanted to say thank you for keeping everyone safe on June 2nd, 2020. I work for a small business and am grateful for being notified by the City of Coral Springs regarding the planned rally. Due to possible safety risks involved, my employer felt it was best to close the business for the day. It costs small business owners a lot to err on the side of caution. Notification helped to reduce potential risks for all parties. Thank you for the fair and unbiased handling of this event and looking out for all participants. This proactive approach limits any possible negative situations. Thank you for keeping everyone safe. Very nice, very nice, good to hear. Please Thank give you. Robert uh, a moment. He's still, he's having a little technical difficulty but he should have the caller through any minute. Great, would you like to read the second one, Deborah? One's a little longer, but I'd be happy to. 
Sure. This is from Mr. Paul Schilling of 2935 Northwest 87 Terrace in Coral Springs. City Commissioners, I have sent an email to each of you on May 26, 2020 regarding a fence problem I was having with my neighbor and the city. Joshua Simmons was kind enough to respond and pass my problem on to the department. Oh, development services department who have done nothing. My neighbor built a fence entirely on my property. The city inspected the fence and approved the job. Apparently the city inspector never checked to see where the fence was erected. Now my neighbor is refusing to move the fence because he has approval from the city. Since the end of March, 2020, I have been shifted around to the assistant building manager, the chief building manager, and now the assistant development services person. I know government Government works slowly, but this is ridiculous. All I am asking is the city to review the permit application, permit requirements, parentheses, fence must be erected entirely inside the property line, close parentheses, and inspection procedures to see if something has been overlooked or mistakes have been made that may determine that a violation of the original permit has occurred. This will allow the city to take action to rectify this situation. It seems to me that a lot of things were not done correctly by the city. Otherwise, I will be forced to hire an attorney and sue my neighbor. It isn't right that I should be forced to spend thousands of dollars to correct a problem the city won't fix because they don't want to admit they made mistakes. Also, I think the city should develop a postcard notification system to adjacent neighbors that a building permit has been granted to one of their neighbors. The postcard should include the scope of work and who the neighbors should contact if a problem arises during or after the construction. Thank you, Paul Schilling. Thank you very much, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Robert, are you ready for uh, the two other speakers yet? Uh, yes, we have our first caller on the line, Mr. Mayor. Great. Hi, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Commissioner, City Manager, and City Attorney. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, would you all not agree that affordable housing is an issue in Coral Springs? My name is Shawnee Bailey, proud resident of Coral Springs, single mom to five, co-founder of Hope Foundation. Our program will provide free housing for low income single parents with a strong desire to earn a post-secondary degree. This program is also um, for new business owners that wanna grow their business. Each parent will have up to four years to save for free while they work towards their goals. Each parent will undergo a strenuous application process with strict guidelines and requirements. Upon arrival, each parent will be assigned a life coach making sure they get the most out of this program will help them apply for scholarship and financial aid. Students and parents must maintain a 2.5 GPA and business owners must attend business classes offered through our partners. We'll also offer peer support like a family-like atmosphere, tutoring, mentoring, counseling, parenting, life skills, childcare, and more. We want these parents equipped leaving our program whole, emotionally, spiritually, financially, mentally, ready to take on the world. This program is unique and isn't offered anywhere in the state of Florida. Wouldn't it be great if Coral Springs was the first to lead in this initiative? We couldn't think of a more appropriate city to partner with for this program. Coral Springs is always the leader in solving problems. The city has such a diverse demographic and plethora of resources that'll make this program a success. Our program will transform lives, break the cycle of poverty. This program is for the single parent that wants to go back to school and can't afford to. This program is for the single parent living in a small one bedroom. This program is for a single parent staying in abusive relationships because they can't afford to live independently. This program is for the single parent that uprooted their kids to live in another state just to get affordable housing. You see, single parents just need a break, a hand up, and our program is the solution. Don't you wanna be a part of the solution too? Education is key to ending poverty, breaking cycles of generational curses and impoverished mentality. Our programs, the pathway to success, create a long-term stability. Our teams experienced, excited, and ready to serve the community. Every day we don't service a Cold Springs re resident is a missed opportunity to impact a life. Don't you think it's time to offer this service to Cold Springs residents? The time is now. I know I gave you guys a lot of information and facts. I already spoke to some of you that support our efforts. I'll be continuing this conversation with each of you. But my hope is that you agree that Cold Springs is the best place to make home for this program. Thank you so much for your time. 
Ms. Bailey, can you uh, share again the uh, website and or the phone number and the name of your organization? Absolutely. So it's hope. It's helping other people excel. Um, and the website is helping other people excel.org. Phone number is 305-928-HOPE. And the email is info at helping other people org. Great. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate what you're doing for the community. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Simmons. I believe, uh, I think she may have emailed all of us too. So there may be uh, an email in our, our record or in our, I guess, in our records from uh, this organization. Yeah, sounds familiar. Absolutely. Great, we'll hear from the next signed speaker then, Robert. Yes, stand by, I'll get them on the line now, 30 seconds. Mr. Mayor, I have the next caller on the line. Great, welcome. Nancy, Nancy Mateer, 9833 Northwest 54th Place, Coral Springs, Florida. Good afternoon, Commission, Coral Springs Commission. I want to show to all who participated and supported the youth organizers and their initiative in leading a peace protest. Thank you all who spoke, Commissioner Joshua Simmons and Mayor Scott Brooks and also want to send a special thank you to Coral Springs community for sure ensuring our voices were heard. So thank you, you very much appreciated. Thank you, Nancy, for your leadership. I'm sure you'll hear from uh, most, if not all of us later about how peaceful the protest was and uh, I was proud to be a part of it. And uh, you're a wonderful leader, Nancy. Uh, we, need, we need what you're doing in the community. So thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Uh, is anybody else uh, uh, let us know that they'd like to be heard during public comment? Okay, I don't see any uh, any yeses. So we'll move on to the next part of the meeting. It's the consent agenda because there are no because there are no public hearings. We're going to pull items number three and five so that staff can briefly talk about those items. Are there any other polls? Okay, so no other polls from the team. May I entertain a motion to uh, approve the rest of the consent agenda? To approve. Motion by Commissioner Vignola. Second. Second by Commissioner Sarah. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, carries unanimously. Uh, Frank, I'll let you talk about item number three or pass it to thank, your. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I'm going to have Claudia come up and, and talk to us a little bit about this item. Uh, this is something we've worked on uh, for quite some time uh, for our University Drive corridor. There are certain sections of the corridor that are out of compliance at this point in time and, um, and also uh, have some uh, trees and shrubs and those types of things that need to be replaced because they're not in good shape. Claudia has done a really nice job at coming up with a, a program that will address all of those issues and it's funded by the Tree Trust Fund. So Claudia, please tell us a little bit about this program. Good afternoon, Frank. Um, I'm not sure, I sent a presentation to Matt and I don't know if he can put it up. Thank you. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, two years ago, the Public Works Department submitted a, an initiative to improve the landscape uh, on our arterial roads. And just so you know, everything, even the replacement of one species to another and changing the design, the current design of these roads that are under the jurisdiction of either DOT or the county have to go through a very uh, lengthy process. 
of permitting. So we decided to start with University Drive for several reasons. One, it's because the north side, um, so north of Sample Road, it's being uh, it's going to be improved by uh, by the state. So we thought that it would be a, a good thing to have the entire corridor done. Uh, second, this is probably one of the most uh, utilized roads because it connects the city with uh, with other municipalities as Samaritan and Parkland. It's highly commercial. Um, the vegetation is in very poor condition and currently, as Frank said, it's violating current design standards. So the boundaries of this project are Sample Road traveling south to the limits of Tamarack. If we can go to the next one, please. This is just a summary of the, of the current conditions on the road. Uh, this section of University Drive is one of the three state roads that is maintained by the city. Uh, as I said, it's like just for to make even slight changes in, in this road, you have to go um, through the process of getting a permit and it's very lengthy and complicated sometimes. Uh, this uh, road is composed of medians of different widths that go from four to 20 feet. And that's why we have so many constraints uh, with designing a nice uh, canopy road. Um, it is efficient, as I said, when it comes to meeting DOT landscape design standards. Uh, right now, we mainly have laurel oaks, sables, and Montgomery palms. Um, the laurel oaks are not a good um, selection because these trees do not tolerate the uh, street conditions, so they're dying off uh, and, and they have developed certain uh, health uh, problems. And the sable palms required a more intensive tree treatment cycle, so it's probably not the best choice for a road like this. Next one, please. Uh, okay, so this is just a summary of the proposed improvement. So we're gonna be installing new trees and new palms. We're gonna be removing some trees that are in poor condition and preserving some that are conflicting with design standards, but that are uh, in good condition. We're gonna be, um, uh, the idea is to create a nice uh, canopy coverage in the road with the limitations that we have there. Uh, DOT is requesting us to relocate the sable palm, so those are gonna be moved to a secondary road. Um, the first non-concrete median as you enter the city from Tamarack is going to be a statement median and you're, you're going to see, I'm going to show you a little rendering of how it's going to look like. Uh, we're going to be consolidating the pavers on the nose of the median that it's close to the intersection with West, West Sample Road. And the idea is that all four corners at one point are going to match and it's going to create a nice entryway to the CRA for the city. So it's they're just gonna look a little different than all the other papers in the, in the city. We're gonna be installing root barriers. We're gonna be stocking all medians to capacity. And the project, it also, it's also gonna include retrofitting the irrigation system. Um, the summary of cost, this project is costing approximately 300,000. Um, I know it says they're 110,000 coming from Tree Trust Fund is actually a little bit more than that. It's mostly, most of the funds are coming from Tree Trust Fund, uh, 125 that came from the initiative that, that was submitted. So I'm not, now I'm gonna walk you through the entire corridor so you can have an idea of how, what the current conditions are and how it's gonna look like. So uh, we, I don't have a rendering program, so it's, it's just mostly hand, uh, Hand point. So it's like, just uh, just have an open mind for this. So um, as I said, it's like most of the trees that we have there that are um, uh, large are either dying off or dead. We have very few that are in good condition, only six of the lower lobes. Those are, we're gonna preserve. So this is the, the first median and that tree is actually gone and it's gonna be re replaced by um, another tree of a better species. And we're gonna be putting a nice ground cover with color. Next one, please. So these are the species that we're using in that median. So as I said, a ground cover with a little bit of color and we're gonna be installing um, material that is large, already large. So it creates an instant gratification. Next one. Um, this is the condition of that first median that I said, it's gonna be like a, the statement median. 
And for those of you who attended the presentation that the consultant landscape architect made in December of 2017, she was saying that this is probably one of the only few meetings in the city where we can put royal palms. Next one, please. So this is what she was proposing. And, and I asked her, like, let's just go a little bit further than that. And let's just put more so we can have a really nice, this median is very wide, so we can have something that it's a little bit more uh, impacting. So next one. Uh, this is how it looks like. And next one. This is how we are going to make it look like we're going to be put in large uh, royal palms. We're going to be put in native trees in between um, some shrubs and some large uh, um, material that that looks uh, very impacting and additional trees as you travel north. Next one, please. So this is some of the material. It's, uh, as I said, royal palms, we're planting. Uh, most of the material is going to be native. We're planting cinnamon bark, which is a very attractive native tree. And we're putting brown covers and shrubs that have uh, color like the red velvet on the right side. Next. Um, those are uh, more material. So it's like the trees that we're putting have very interesting textures and the, uh, and the bark. So just to make it look different. Next one, please. Um, again, more of the material that we're installing and the size, uh, 12 foot uh, grade wood, which is a, a, a very large palm. Next, please. Okay, so um, you're gonna start seeing on this um, slides that these are the deficiencies that we currently have. So it's like, in this case, is the tree within one four feet lateral offset. So if the tree is in good condition, we are trying to preserve those trees. We requested a variance to DOT uh, after review and crash reports. And if the trees were not involved in, in, in accidents or anything, we requested a variance and they approved all the variances that we requested. Because if we remove those trees, we're gonna be left without any large trees in the corridor at this moment. So, so this is one example. And what we're doing here is just leaving that tree there and add in more. And by the way, if I remove that tree, I won't be able to put it back, to put something of that size back there. So that's why we requested those variances, even though they're in violation of the design standards. Next one. So we're gonna be adding more uh, vegetation there, more trees, smaller trees and palms. Next. Then we have medians that are underutilized. So we are, um, as I said, the uh, one of the goals is to stock everything to 100% capacity. So next one, please. We're adding palms there and, and respecting the 100 feet uh, only ground cover requirement that DOT has. Next. Real quick, Mayor. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. One okay, so now. then we have more. You know, uh, we have a, a question. Uh, yeah. From Larry, from Commissioner Vignola. Yes. Claudia, the um, other palms you're saying there, do you know what we're looking at? I'm so sorry, I couldn't hear your question. The the other palms you're you're talking about putting in there? What, yes. what kind of palms are oh, we talking those about? Are, yeah, I apologize. Those are Montgomery palms. Okay. So um, the other problem that we had is that some of the medians are so skinny, they're like four feet. Uh, uh, and the uh, thin weed, and they only allow something that they call, um, um, oh my God, what's the term? Um, <laughs> when the palms break. So um, so they were only allowing solitaire palms, but we were able to um, recommend Montgomery palms, which is what we mostly have in, the, in this road. And it's gonna match the conditions on the other side, on the north side of the, of the project. The one that it's being done by DOT. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, same deficiencies. Um, again, request and variances for those, but adding more material. Next one, please. Again, adding the bridal bell, as I said, has an interest, a very interesting bark uh, because it's like peeling. So those are the ones that are going to be installed there. Next. Um, this is what we have uh, here, underutilized uh, median. So we're gonna be putting uh, palms, uh, trees. I'm sorry, could you please, yeah, more trees there. And again, respecting the 100 feet requirement by DOT. Next, 
Okay, so we have areas that is, uh, where we only have sod. So if those areas, we cannot put anything different than that. So we're retaining sod, trying to save money as much as we can if, if the conditions are good. Uh, next. And then we have more sod and we have concrete separators. Next, please. And you're gonna see that we have a lot of those. So uh, something that um, the city manager asked is if we could pressure clean everything after all the improvements are completed, uh, are completed, that's something that it's gonna be done as well. So everything looks fresh, clean and fresh. Next, please. We have, uh, again, very skinny medians where we could not put anything different. So uh, retaining existing troughs. More concrete separators, next. And, uh, and here, again, another uh, median where we cannot put anything different than pumps. So uh, we're gonna be putting um, uh, Montgomery pumps here and retaining that tree at, that, at the end. Next, please. Uh, we're going to be putting uh, that type of uh, shrub, which is called Carissa, next. Uh, that is a tree that was in the previous picture. Again, uh, it's sufficient, but uh, it is in good condition. So we're going we're gonna to preserve it and adding more material there. Next, please. Um, here, we're uh, keeping the trees and replacing and adding shrubs. Next. Uh, adding more palms and more and replacing some shrubs in poor condition. Next, um, adding more palms and replacing shrubs. Next, and this is one of the examples that we have of trees that are violating design standards because they're within the 100 feet ground cover only zone, and they're in very poor condition. So we just we're just gonna remove those. Next. Uh, again, underutilized, uh, so adding more palms and shrubs. Next. Uh, there's a, these are trees that are in poor condition and uh, that violate design standards, so those are being removed. Next. We're actually replacing those with, uh, with palms. So more concrete separators um, and areas of just sod. Next. Um, so sable palms, as I said, those are not the, uh, the best choice for University Drive. They're native and they're very sturdy, but they need a lot of maintenance because you need to prune them because they do not self-clean. So we're going to move those to uh, Heron Bay and we're going to be putting uh, uh, Montgomery palms, which are self-cleaning. So a lot better to clean and, and trim. Um, so they look a little bit more clean than, than the sable palm. So that one is going to be relocated and we're going to be putting a uh, live oak there and adding shrubs. Next, please. Uh, more sod areas, next. More concrete separators, next. Um, we're going to be adding trees and shrubs there, live oaks, next. And that it's one of the species that it's going to be used, that it's called golden creeper. So trying to add color to, to the corridor as well. Next, uh, adding trees. Um, uh, those are um, live oaks that we're adding to that median. Next, just so they match the, uh, the conditions that we have here. These are these live oaks are not violating standards or in good condition. So they're, they're going to be preserved. Next. And then that cluster of palms is going to be just, uh, those palms are going to be relocated. And we're going to be installing canopy trees, live oaks. Next, please. More areas that cannot plant it out. Next, more. And uh, again, preserving the tree and relocating the palm. Next. Uh, next, those are areas with pavers that are going to be cleaned up. So this is one of the examples of palms that you would think that are frangible. That's the term that I was trying to think. So frangible is a uh, plant material that if it's impacted by a car, it breaks and it doesn't cause a fatality. So in this case, this palms, which are Montgomery palms, are not considered frangible. However, they're allowing us to keep them because it wouldn't make any sense to put something like solitaire palms there when they're not going to match what we have in the rest of the corridor. So we were able to pull out those crash reports and show them that no car has impacted those palms. So they're, they're going to be uh, preserved. Next, please. So more of that. 
Next. Uh, more uh, separators, concrete separators, next. Retaining sob there, next. Next. Uh, again, retaining the ground covers, uh, next. And we have the same condition here where palms violate uh, design standards because they're within the four feet lateral offset. Uh, but no, there's no indication that um, they have caused accidents because they're there, they're not frangible. So we're gonna keep them just so we keep the, uh, uh, the same design for the entire corridor, the same theme. Next, please. More areas that cannot be uh, planted out. Next, uh, preserving the trees. Next, and here we're relocating the sable palms and installing larger plant material, the, the live oaks. This is across from, from Ardwalk, so it's gonna look very nice, that commercial zone. It's gonna look uh, with a heavy canopy um, area um, right, uh, when, when the trees mature. Next, please. More areas with concrete separators, next. Um, just here, um, we're going to be adding palms and replacing troughs. Next. More areas that cannot receive any vegetation. Next. Um, um, next, please. So here, just, just uh, adding palms and replacing troughs. Next. We're getting close to the end. Um, more concrete separators. Next. And here is, we're, we're almost close to Sample Road. Again, palms violating design standards, but we're gonna preserve them and replace the shrubs just so we keep the same theme as I said. And the last one, this is where we have the uh, pavers right now. As you can see, you have cutouts with grass and, and uh, pavers, very difficult to maintain both of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna consolidate the pavers and we're gonna create a special design or different design that it's different than any other pavers in the city. We're gonna put like uh, diamonds, uh, uh, some diamonds uh, along the uh, uh, the uh, uh, pavers um, section, and we're gonna make them match with the other project that it's north uh, of Sample. And uh, if next year we are able to improve Sample Road, they're gonna have the same design. So again, it's just trying to create uh, something that it's, it's a little bit more unique and it will give you the impression that you're entering uh, a different zone, which is the CRA. Okay, and um, so as you can see, University Drive has many uh, constraints to make significant improvements. But again, we're, um, we are gonna be able to get 100% of the plant material that can be installed there is gonna be planted out. And we incorporated uh, Royal Palms just to where we could and the, uh, I know, I know Commissioner Vignola likes those. We're moving the sable palms, so, so they're not a nice or there. And, um, and we're, we're adding large canopy trees where we were able to. Okay, and I have one more slide that I would like to share with you so you can have an idea. And that's the last one, Matt, uh, the very last one. Thank you. And this is just so you can have an idea. As I said, we have three, DOT roads that I really wanna uh, improve uh, as soon as possible. So we're doing University Drive. Next year, I wanna do sample road and the uh, DOT section goes from University to State Road 7. I'm already working with the landscape architect on that. And the other section on the Western side is County. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a design that it's gonna match the other section of sample. And then we will work on uh, Coral Ridge Drive and Coral Springs Drive. And Royal Palm, it's gonna be done to, however, we don't have the signs. That's the only um, main road that it's owned by the city or the city has jurisdiction over it. We don't have design standards. I don't wanna be limited by what DOT has right now and their design standards because they don't let you uh, do significant improvements. So I'm working on design standards as well. And hopefully in two years, that road is going to be significantly improved. That's all I have. So Mayor, uh, that's our presentation and we're available for questions. Great. Any commissioner have a question? I see Vice Mayor Carter with her hand up and then Commissioner Vignola and then Commissioner Simmons. 
Claudia, I, have, um, I only have two questions. Of the existing trees that are going to be maintained, will they be thinned out? Because they look a little bushy for wind to be able to go through for hurricane season. Yes, we actually completed the tree term in about a month ago of the trees that are staying, yes. Okay. And lastly, the royal palms that are going to be used, they um, at full growth and uh, maturity, their palm fronds are like weapons when they drop. So is there like a regular trimming program to avoid potential accidents? So unfortunately, yeah, those palms are very attractive, but they're what it's called self-cleaning. So you don't trim them. They self-clean, they trim themselves. <laughs> so that's why they're a liability. And that's, that's why we only put them in that median that it's wide enough to tolerate a, a, a front falling and uh, falling inside the median and not in the road. Okay, good. All right, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you. Commissioner Vignola. But I want to thank you uh, up front. I know this is something uh, the vice mayor and I were at a workshop, I believe it was April of 17, and we were talking about our, our medians and, and making those types of enhancements and things. And you see it around the city. I know it's a, a process to catch up um, everywhere. Um, I, I think this is all uh, uh, long overdue. Um, just a, a couple of things that I'd like to share with this. First off, Royal Palms, I love. They're native. Um, so for storms and those types of things to have native uh, plant material is always always a good thing. Um, the the medians, you know, that's kind of our, our issue in Coral Springs is some of our medians are a little too thin to do some of those uh, uh, bigger improvements um, that I think we'd all like to see. Um, where the areas are really thin and when we have a lot of concrete in the future, um, I would like to see some type of pavers or something like that just to break up the, the plainness of, of some of those areas. Um, and then my, my question about the live, which we're putting in everywhere, um, did we look at any other type of material like a Bonesia or something like that, where we, we have some flowering opportunities? Um, I know over by the walk, they planted a, a whole bunch of Bonesia in there and, and it's something that puts out a, a pretty flower when you, when you drive along uh, university. We did, and I'm actually trying to limit the amount of live oaks that we use in the city because we have way too many. However, everything that blooms, unfortunately, is very brittle. So Bolnesias tend to lean. Uh, they take a while to establish, and um, and they do they do grow, but they're very slow growers. So you really don't get that uh, canopy gratification that you're looking like the canopy coverage that you're looking. And again, unfortunately, very brittle when uh, when storms come, they break very easily. So uh, we did explore it a lot because <clears throat> that was one of the things that I that I told the landscape architect. I said it like I really don't want to use it, that many live oaks, but that was the only choice that we had uh, based on the current conditions, unfortunately. <laughs> but they're good trees, so. And the other thing is, as far as the, the sable palms, um, they're, 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 to me, like the, the cheapest of, uh, of looking and, and purchasing actually too, the sable palms. Is there a way we could replace where we're planning on putting those sable palms that are moving those somewhere else and, and using a different type of uh, material? Well, that is a requirement by DLT, so I really didn't have a, because that was, again, one of my comments I told them is like, just to relocate them, it's going to cost us more than getting something different. And they said, no, we ask you that it's a permit condition. You have to relocate them. So what I'm doing is on Heron Bay, we have already a row of uh, sable palms and we're missing a couple. So we're moving them there. So it's not going to look like something new. It's just uh, replacing material. And, and Claudia, I just want to let you know, I, uh, you're making a difference throughout the community everywhere. Uh, you can tell where, where you go and, and the entranceways and stuff. If you go back even a couple of years ago, um, some of those improvements that we did six, seven years ago, we're, we're looking uh, pretty down and, and uh, I think you're doing an awesome job. And, and I think our residents are, are starting to notice some of those improvements that you've been responsible for. So thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Great. Uh, Commissioner Simmons and then Commissioner Sarah. All right, so uh, I guess kind of, so uh, how much uh, does this project cost again? It's going to be about 300000 Okay, and uh, where is the money coming from? The money is coming mainly from tree trust funds. So tree trust funds are uh, funded through um, uh, uh, permittees that get a tree removal permit and cannot install the material on site, so they have to make a contribution to the city. 
Plan. Said, main, mainly, how much is it coming from the tree trust fund? So from the tree trust fund is going to be, so I'm getting 125 is uh, from the operate uh, operational account and the reminder, uh, which is 200, um, I'm sorry, 175 from tree trust fund. Okay. And so when you say it's coming from the operational account, that means it was budgeted uh, in the prior budgeting year to come from, to go into, I guess, the, for, for, I guess, Community improvements, or I forgot the name. Sorry. Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I got to say it's kind of weird to. I know we have to keep our community looking great, uh, but it's it's kind of weird. Uh, you know, after everything we've been through and the shortfalls that we're going to be facing, uh, to you know, this be one of the you know first things that we vote on when it comes to money. I I, I know we have to consent, um, but you know, just while we're here, um, it's just it's just very weird to um you know vote on something like this when we're looking at things that we have to cut and i get it it came from but you know budget year last year it's already been kind of accounted for it's just it's just strange i don't you know i i won't pretend to know how to do Catherine Gibbons' job at all uh and i know she does a great job um i just got to say you know to the staff as a commissioner um it's just with everything we're facing it's just very strange to have to vote on this especially you know with that that you know the amount of money that's being kicked out forward and and you know whatnot um but again i know we got to keep the community looking beautiful but you know it's just at some point you know i, I just got we always got to be mindful that we're going to have to make some 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 tough decisions and sacrifice some of the things that we want to do um so i i just wanted to say that thank you commissioner simmons uh commissioner sarah and uh i'll turn it over to you frank all right thank you mayor uh, Claudia, I do want to expand a little bit on Commissioner Simmons' question. Um, on the backup documentation, and I, I apologize because I didn't ask this in my briefing, but I thought the budget for this project was around 212000 And then um, you had mentioned in your slideshow that it, it was three hundred. So um, uh, what happened is that I um, I guess originally I didn't say that uh, the landscape architect fees were paid in a previous year. So that's why they were not included there. And uh, some of the, uh, like the tree trimming and all that was already encumbered into another account. And that's why. So the, the, the remainder for the projects the 212,000 commissioner. Okay. So you were referencing the tree trust fund, and I'm just trying to understand this. You said 125,000 is coming out of the tree trust fund, and then I, I wasn't following your answer to Commissioner Simmons. Where is the remaining balance coming from? So, it's, hang on, Claudia. Catherine, can you can you clear up the budget question, please? Sure, happy to. So the general fund um, is putting 125,000 of uh, of the initiative that was already funded for last fiscal year, the current fiscal year that we're in. And then part of the money is coming out of tree trust funds. This is um, something that we do budget for. We do talk about every year um, as we're coming up to budget season, you'll, we will talk about uh, the tree trust fund um, going into next year. It is a fund that we have about $900,000 in. And we do, knowing that certain projects do come in uh, that we get money from businesses um, as they are getting their permits and their fees, part of it goes into that. And uh, we do pull back on some of that so we can put money back into the community for it. So Catherine, out of the $88,000 that's already been spent, did that come out of the 125,000 budgeted or did that come out of the tree trust fund? Um, it's coming out of the tree trust fund with piece with part of it coming out of general fund. So you do a matching uh, portion uh, for the tree trust fund and the general fund. Uh, for this fiscal year, correct. Thank you. All right, All right. so 125 out of out of general, and then 125 out of tree 100, trust. 175. 175. 175 out of tree trust. I'm just. Total projects, 300,000, 125 out of general fund, 175 out of tree trust fund. Okay, Great. thank you. Uh, the second question, Claudia, and I appreciate all the pictures because I'm a visual person, so that really helped me, thank you. Um, regarding the, the existing trees, are any of them gonna be lost or is it the plan to preserve all of them? 
We are only removing the trees that are violating the sign standards and that are in poor condition. But when we're removing them, is the plan to, to preserve 100% of them or are there gonna be some trees lost? So yeah, we're removing the ones that, um, we're gonna be losing some of the trees that are definitely not salvageable because they have a condition that it's gonna kill them uh, soon. And on and, and top of that, they are violating uh, design standards. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Frank, anything else to add? No, sir. Great, uh, may I entertain a motion to approve? I have another question, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So. And I know it said, you know, we already passed the budget on this and things like that. You know, what would happen to that 125,000 uh, if it wasn't allocated for this project? What would happen to that? It would uh, be, it would stay in the budget and go towards uh, fund balance uh, at the end of the year. So if, if we were in a shortfall situation, it could be used to make up for a shortfall situation. If we uh, didn't need it, it would go to fund balance and it would uh, roll over into our reserves. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Mayor. I'm ready. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve, but only using the funds from the tree trust fund. And just to be clear, at this juncture, Frank, there would that would allow for a hundred twenty-five thousand to be used. No, um, uh, seventy-five. We 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 would work with Catherine to see what's already been uh, taken from the general fund because the the architect services and the tree trimming have already been done. I don't know what the total. It's around eighty-eight thousand dollars that's been spent already. Um, but if we can take it off from the tree trust fund uh, legally and uh, the money is there, we will certainly do that um, and then do the uh, uh, um, accounting to put the 125000 in totality back into the general fund to keep that as, uh, as a go towards shortfall for this year's budget. I see Catherine shaking her head yes, so I'm assuming we're allowed to do that. So I think we meet the intent of Commissioner Simmons' motion. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, there's a second by Vice Mayor Carter. Any discussion? The mayor does. Okay, Commissioner Vignola. Yeah, just um, you know, I understand Commissioner Simmons' point. Um, my my concern is the, the tree trust fund, and we've spent a lot of that tree trust fund over the last uh, decade or so, and and especially the past few years. Um, these type of improvements um, will. Um, my opinion, I think we've, we've seen it across the city when we've done these types of improvements, um, we'll increase property values, but we'll get a uh, return on investment both for our residents and also to the city. So um, I like the split of the, the two different funds on it. Um, I, I think it's, you know, I don't want to just burn up the tree trust funds so down the road when things happen. Um, I'd like to have some back in there. So I think a little contribution of $125,000 is, is uh, something I'd be more in favor of, so. Okay, any further discussion? Um, I guess, let me, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. Um, I had a thought. Um, you can go ahead, Commissioner. No, nope, no problem, take your time. Did, did someone else want to speak so I can try to remember? So, I think Commissioner so, Sarah wanted to pipe in. Go ahead, Frank. If I could add some clarity, Catherine, do we know how much of 125,000 was spent? Uh, no, I'd have to go back and check. Okay, so the contract to finish the project is 212,000. We know that the initial phases were split between the tree trust fund and between the general fund. Um, I'm just throwing it out as another option. We could leave the remainder in the general fund, take the 212 from the tree trust fund, which would finish out the project. And it just gives that general fund a smaller portion than what was originally budgeted. Uh, just, just food for thought, that's another option. So Frank, just repeat that one more time so we're all clear on that. And then if that worked for the mover and the seconder, you know, we may go that route. So originally 125,000 was out of general fund, 175 was out of tree trust fund. There's been $88,000 worth of work done so far, leaving 212,000 to complete 
the project on University Drive. The initial 88,000, I don't have the numbers right now. I see Catherine working in the background and we'll try, we'll get them for you as fast as we can. But some money has been spent at both accounts. There is money left from the general front side out of the 125,000. We could preserve that, take the 212 out of the tree trust fund. And that way there, you're, you're still taking some out of the general fund, but not what was originally approved as part of the budget of the 125. I just don't know what that number is until I get that from budget. Gotcha. And I, I think, I think uh, Commissioner Vignola, you didn't want that, right? Like you didn't want uh, us taking more funds out of the tree trust fund. Is that what you were saying with your comment? Mayor? Yes, by all yeah. means. So, so my concern is the tree trust fund and how that fund um, gets replenished. Um, I think, you know, doing this as, as a split like that, like was proposed by staff, um, you know, I think, you know, with investments, investments into the community like that, I think we'll see back over the years through, through uh, property value increases. So I think we could do it like um, staff, uh, staff recommended and eventually, you, you know, we, we get that money back. To me, I, I look at it as, as an investment that way. We won't get if we go ahead and we and we do it just with the tree trust fund, money won't go back to the tree trust fund this way. And that's kind of more my concern with it. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Vice Mayor Carter, and then uh, Commissioner Sarah, if you'd like to add in. Thank you. Uh, I was trying to determine what is the current balance of the tree trust fund? It's about $900,000. Done, Mr. Mayor, thank you. So I, I do have a question, Frank. Uh, is this a matter that could come before us, uh, you know, in two or three weeks? Sure. Um, I, I would ask Rich to tell me what the uh, what the timeliness um, of the of the uh, uh, project is. Uh, Rich Rich just texted me saying he believes all the design work came from the Tree Trust Fund. Therefore, the uh, the one hundred twenty five thousand should still be intact. I know Catherine's doing the research on that, but we could, if 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 uh, you guys want to push this item off till the next commission meeting, we could certainly do that. I, I, guess, I just wanted to know the information, not necessarily from me. Uh, but Commissioner Sarah, did you have something you want to share? Yeah, I just wanted to comment. I believe that Commissioner Simmons' concerns are real, um, but I also agree with the comments of Commissioner Vignola um, with regards to the investment. Um, I know I'm still not at my one year anniversary, but one of the things that I personally observed, you know, before I ran and then also what I heard loud and clear is the beautification and, and keeping our city up to the highest standard possible. So, you know, I trust Catherine's, um, you know, management of the budget and I defer to staff on what we can and cannot do. I mean, there are a lot of uncertainty. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty around the budget right now, and I get that. Um, but I believe that if we exhaust the tree fund, uh, we will um, potentially be putting ourselves in a, a difficult situation. And I do feel like we owe it to the residents to invest some money of the general fund into this project. Thank you. Gotcha. Uh, Commissioner Vignola, and then Commissioner Simmons, and then me. Just um, if if this is to come back in front of the commission at a time, if we can maybe show um, how much gets put into the tree trust fund by year, let's say over the last five years, just so I think the commission would have an idea how that fund uh, is getting replenished. Um, so when, when we're talking about spending money out of the tree trust fund, we know we I'd rather not spend too much out of it compared to what's getting replenished into the fund. And commission, thank you, Commissioner Vignola. Commissioner Simmons. And 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 all all con, all these concerns are valid, right? I mean, I think we all have the pleasure of working with, uh, you know, each other who you know care about the city and what it should look like. I know I do. Um, you know, I'm a homeowner here, right? First time homeowner here. Uh, and, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, but I don't I don't want to be that guy. But I feel like you know, once we've gotten the numbers back and stuff of what you know we're we're looking with, you know, for the shortfalls due to COVID, um. You know, I think I've kind of mentally kind of turned into that scrimp and scratch and save type of guy. 
Um, and, you know, so forgive me. I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> please forgive me if I'm annoying where, where it may seem like I'm being trivial over, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Um, and, and Commissioner Vignola, you're right about reinvesting into the community. And, and, but, you know, I think there's other ways that we do that as well. And I think the more we can do on our side as far as trying to save and kind of move around dollars, um, the less we will have to go and ask residents for, you know, because at the end of the day, we have to operate and people are going to still want the same level of service. Um, and, you know, I'm not trying to necessarily debate over $125,000 today, but just the bigger picture as far as, you know, just kind of how we got to look at this, because at the end of the day, we got to provide some level of service. And if we got to come after the residents or not come after them, but, um, you know, at, go to the residents to try to figure out a way to get that money back if, we, if necessary. I want it to be as small or as, as, as possible to them um, because at the end of the day, they, they won't understand. You know, we saw the unemployment numbers, right? We saw how many people are without jobs and how many people are struggling. I mean, thank, thankfully, uh, the governor decided to extend the moratorium on evictions and foreclosures and things like that. I mean, you know, just because people are acting like, you know, COVID is over, like nothing happened. You know, there are still people that are dealing with some really tough realities and we're even right here in the city. So I guess I just want to say that message from more of a global perspective, but also kind of give you my own thought process where it looks like maybe I'm just, you know, being too trivial over, you know, this certain amount. I mean, we, you know, maybe I'm 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 thinking too simply about the tree trust fund, but nine hundred thousand dollars, you know, <laughs> sounds like a lot to me, you know. So that's kind of where I came from from this, because you know, you guys know we have the museum issue coming up and different things like that. And so I'm just looking for opportunities. Thank you, Commissioner. So I don't think your concerns and the dollar amounts are trivial whatsoever, especially in this environment. I also love the idea of the reinvestment in our community and to some extent being able to show some business as usual. Um, I, I would like us, uh, if we could put this off until the 17th, get some more information, a little bit more contemplation and more context of where we are with the budget shortfall I know at one meeting, I'm not sure exactly when it was, we had an estimate of $4.3 to $8 million deficit. And then recently I saw that deficit uh, was more uh, refined and, and a closer estimate was about $6 million, if I recall from you, Catherine. Um, so I would, I would suggest if we can, Commissioner Simmons, uh, if we could bring this up again at the next meeting, I really appreciate, Frank, uh, that you've asked me to pull this from consent. Um, a lot of times consent you know, items can go quicker uh, because it's on the consent agenda. And obviously uh, our team has had a lot of questions, a lot of thoughts, a lot of comments, all good ones, all valid. Uh, so that would, that would be my request. Mayor, if I may, um, I have two answers for you on average. The tree trust fund gets a it, it, it's all dependent on construction so there is no set amount each year for the tree trust fund to get an in any kind of influx of money however if we go back and look at the averages it's probably about 250 to 300 thousand dollars a year that would normally go into the tree trust fund um on top of that uh the uh, budget shortfall that you talked about that number's been refined to about the five million dollar mark Okay. Um, we are, uh, we're, staff is, is, has worked to come up with a plan to close that gap this year without, as Commissioner Simmons says, without a reduction in service levels. Um, you know, we've been able to, uh, uh cut s spending elsewhere that, uh, you know, is, it has impacts, but the impacts are not at the service levels, uh, at this point. So we'll be happy, staff will be happy to bring it back if, if that's what you want, but I would like to know what questions you want answered so we can prepare for that next meeting as to uh, what else we need to get to you. Yeah, to be frank, Frank, I've only made a suggestion, a uh, very you know, friendly suggestion. And if that wasn't the pleasure of Commissioner Simmons who made the motion, I'm going to respect his motion. Mr. Mayor, uh, can I ask? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Commissioner Sarah. No, I just wanted to uh, see. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted to ask Frank, our city manager, what's the impact of delaying this project by a month? Uh, Rich, is is there any uh, significant impact? Do the uh, do the quotes go past their expiration date? Uh, 
uh, or, or any of those types of things from a purchase, purchasing perspective, uh, what would be your answer to that? I know Rich is on. Rich, you there? Claudia, are you there? Claudia, you're muted, now you're on mute. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> So one of the impacts is that we were uh, hoping that this project would be completed by the end of this fiscal year. The mm -hmm. contractor has 120 days to complete, so if we uh, push it, it's just going to uh, delay that. That's, uh, I'm not sure from the uh, standpoint of purchase in Lewis if, that, if the quote has any type of... Um, the quote's good for 90 days, Claudia. So when did we get the quote? So we would just need to roll over the funds um, for next year. So the mayor, the impacts would be the quotes good for 90 days. So as long as we cut a PO before that 90 days, the quote would remain intact. Um, as far as the work is concerned, uh, we could go beyond this fiscal year. And uh, if the money's all coming out of the tree trust fund, that's irrelevant. If it's coming out of the general fund, then we would have to just take that money and put it in a project and roll it to next year. Yeah, and I'm almost almost positive that the DOT permit uh, has no expiration date, but I will confirm with them. Thank you, Claudia. Answer for you. Thanks, Claudia. Thank you, Commissioner Sarah, for Thank that you. question. Back to you, Commissioner Simmons. Uh, and Claudia, you did a great job. You did a great presentation. So I hope you know that you know these comments are necessarily speaking. Uh, towards you know the presentation of your project, I love the palm trees that were drawn in. I know you say you didn't have a rendering app, so I'm uh, I'm sure you did <laughs> you did the best you could do with getting those palm trees on there. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, I will uh, retract my motion and offer another uh, motion. Uh, I move to table this consent item until our next uh, commission meeting, which is uh, what uh, June. 17th? Yes. Let's, let's make that a motion. I, 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 to note, I may be calling from the hospital. So <laughs> okay. let's make that a motion to continue to June 17th. Motion to continue. And if the seconder agrees with that uh, uh, withdrawal, then, then we're good and we can get a second. Okay, with you, Vice Mayor. She's got a thumbs up. So can we treat that as a second? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll note it. Great. All in favor of the motion to continue to time certain. Next date of our commission meeting, June 17th, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, so it carries four to one. Mayor, may I ask a question? Yes. What would you like to see different on June 17th that you didn't see today so I can uh, have so staff for me, For me, I'd like to be very clear in regards to the dollar amounts uh, that have been expended from either fund and uh, the dollar amounts that we have so far put into the trust, the tree trust fund this year and how it has been trending. Got it, anything an else? Average of 250, uh, but what was it specifically and what are we looking at this year? Uh, and now that, you know, the e economy has been impacted so much. Understand. And I think, so, so kind of a general context too, uh, and that's one of the reasons, too, I appreciated Commissioner Simmons' caution, is when we're looking at that $5 million potential shortfall and we can't rely on the FEMA money coming in uh, to cover that, I'd like to know a little bit more specifics of what the staff is looking at to recommend uh, in terms of uh, cost savings. So, yeah, we can brush that off and represent that. Uh, we'll get that back I'd like to, so generally speaking, Frank, I'd like to have it in greater context and I appreciate Commissioner Simmons uh, making the motion to it uh, being occurring in two weeks. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Bignola. Thank you, Mayor. Um, one other thing I'd like the uh, staff to maybe bring back, this is gonna come back to us, is to um, look at projections for new construction as to what we're looking at in the next year or so for replenishing a tree trust fund, because you know, we've had an influx of some of the construction we uh, developed over uh, a golf course in the city uh, recently, and so that number uh, will be affected uh, as to how much money goes into the tree trust fund. And then when we talk about businesses and things and the amount of growth in the community, um, take a look at what we are looking at uh, as far as any new construction that would impact the tree trust fund and replenish those dollars. Got it. Okay, anything else uh, for staff to consider? 
All right, seeing none, thank you guys, everybody, for that wonderful discussion. The next item that was pulled from consent was number five. This is maintenance and inspection of building autom automation systems citywide. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Deputy City Manager Kern Howell to, uh, to highlight. Great. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commission. Uh, item number five is a request to waive the competitive procurement process. The City of Coral Springs has a need to hire a certified contractor to provide maintenance and inspection services for the Metasys control platform that handles the HVA systems in many of our facilities across the city, such as the public safety building. Mullins Gym, the Fire Training Academy, the Charter School, uh, the Center for the Arts, and City Hall. Uh, the Medicis Control System is owned by Johnson Controls, and currently, other than Johnson Controls, there's one contractor that's certified to handle this platform, and that is DCI Systems, uh, Design Controls, Inc. Uh, Public Works staff has had uh, very responsive and satisfactory performance with using DCI as a subcontractor. So we're here today asking to waive the competitive procurement process to go directly with DCI to support our maintenance and inspection needs for the HVA systems across the city. Uh, so uh, staff is here to answer any questions that you may have on this issue. Thank you, Bob. And, and again, thank you, Frank. I appreciate with there's consent on the consent agenda when we're asking to waive a competitive bid process. I'd like to be able to discuss that. So thank you for pulling it to begin with. Is there any uh, discussion, questions, comments from my team? All right, may I entertain a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second, anyone? Second. Second by Commissioner Simmons. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries five nothing. Uh, Thank next, you, Mayor. you're very welcome, Robert. Thank you very much. Next is ratification matters. Uh, there's the emergency order 2020-17. John? Yep, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this did two things, Mayor. Uh, this uh, expired many of our emergency orders, 2020-09, 2020-10, 11, 12, 13, and 15. Uh, a lot of those were essential uh, service uh, uh, stay-at-home orders. And as you know, we are following the the county through the governor's order now. So one, so that's uh, six of our orders, naturally we let expire there. And it added the outdoor seating uh, ability uh, for uh, restaurants that we're allowing in parking areas and other areas, so long as we, we, we get a look and make sure it doesn't affect traffic or safety. So uh, it's an effort to help expand uh, the restaurant use as they're limited inside to a, a smaller percentage of 25%. And so that's all this uh, uh, order does, and it's a ratification of same request. Great, thank you very much. Any questions of John? All right, so you need a motion to ratify, correct? Please, thank you. Uh, move to approve. Second. Great, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is item number nine, Coral Springs Back in Business Grant Program. So, Mayor, this is a, <clears throat> you know, we, we heard the calls of our small businesses for the help uh, they need to get back in business and do it safely. Um, through the Economic Recovery Task Force, there were some ideas thrown around. Uh, staff worked collectively to come up with a grant program that Christy will outline for us. Great, thank you. Welcome, Christy, and thanks for doing such a great job. Thank you, good afternoon. Um, as Frank mentioned, this idea came out of the Economic Recovery Task Force. We've had several meetings uh, since we convened. Um, it was established to assist the city's business community by providing grant opportunities that are specifically designed to address the reopening needs during the pandemic. So we've allocated $250,000 um, from the Business Incentive Program and from the e operating budget. This allows us to offer $1,000 grants per eligible business, and the funds will be spent on PPE, such as gloves and masks, et cetera. And for the purposes of ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of the business, its employees, and city residents. There are some qualifications that go along with this. Uh, the principal place of business must be within the city limits of Coral Springs and have a physical storefront, so home-based businesses are not eligible. 
It needs to be a small business with three to 49 employees, must have an active business tax receipt and no open code violations. And I'm welcome to answer any questions you may have. Great, any uh, questions from the team? No, just grateful that we have this opportunity. Agreed. Yeah, I, Mr. Mayor, I just have a comment. Sure. Uh, Christy, just phenomenal work. Um, just very impressed by this. And um, when is, when is the, the process go out once again for the grants? As soon as it's approved, we have a press release ready to go. We have the form ready to be uh, launched on the EDO website, which is coralspringsedo.com. Okay, thank you. Great, I really appreciate it as well. This is a request to, to approve. May I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded, any discussion? Uh, thank you, Frank, for your leadership on this and thanks Cindy for her involvement enrolling some of the business leaders from the chamber. Uh, it's been a great task force. Commissioner Vignola. Well, I, you know, I, I understand the, the reasoning for this. Um, I just have some concerns about spending that type of money um, of all of our taxpayers directly on our, our businesses like that. Um, you know, we talk about budget stuff. And I know Commissioner Simmons had the concerns the other way. I'm kind of on the other item. Well, I'm kind of in the same boat on this item. Um, just I, I think uh, I have a hard time going ahead and, and using the taxpayer dollars like that. So I just wanted to share that. Understood. All right, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, carries four to one. Next is item number 10. This is an appointment for the General Employees Pension Board to request to appoint Judy Kelly fiscal procurement coordinator to the general employees pension board as the employee representative effective August 17, 2020. It's a request to appoint. Mayor, there's no presentation on this. However, Dale Pazra is available to answer any questions should you have any. Thank you. Any questions for Dale? May I entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded by Commissioner Sarah. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, carries unanimously. Next is uh, commission communications. Uh, first item is number E11. No, commission communications, yes. So it's a request first to amend the 2020 city commission meeting schedule by canceling the July 1, 2020 regular city commission meeting. So this is typically done. We typically cancel one of the meetings over the summer. Frank, and you're suggesting give the employees a break for this meeting? Mayor, uh, this is something that historically been done. So uh, we want to just bring it back to the commission to see if it is the desire of the commission to do the same this year or to keep the meeting. Great. So uh, Larry, you've been around here uh, the longest consecutively. I'm going to go to you first. What are your thoughts, Commissioner Vignola? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I think we started doing this about eight years ago. I uh, had to come back from a trip uh, for the commission meeting, um, and, you know, thinking about our employee, you know, for 4th of July. And um, thinking about our, our employees, and we, we had the commission meeting on the 3rd, and then 4th of July on the 4th, and, um, you know, giving them the opportunity to uh, take a vacation around that time for, for the holiday, I thought was kind of a, a good thing. Um, so I, I'm definitely in favor of going ahead and, and can't. Sounds good. Any other uh, comments, thoughts, questions? Commissioner Sarah, I see you're unmuted. I'm good. Thank okay. you. So I I like that idea too. Uh, to be honest with you, before you spoke, Commissioner, I was thinking, you know, there's so much going on. We're probably better off having the meeting available. And then as I listened to you, I thought, yeah, there's so much going on. <laughs> it's better to give everybody a little break. So, uh, and really, you know, with, and that we all need a little break sometimes and there's a lot going on and our city is really on top of things. So I think to give our city a little bit more time to themselves or many of our employees, not that we're gonna be closed, we're not gonna be closed, uh, but to not have a meeting at that time, I think would be helpful. 
So I saw Vice Mayor, you wanted to speak. And make for a nice long, uh, refreshing weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so Commissioner Vignola, would you like to make a motion? I'll move to amend and cancel the meeting. All right, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Commissioner Simmons, did you want to weigh in at all? Okay, very good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, carries unanimously. Thank you. So who would like to go first under Commissioner Communications? I'm looking at the room. Sean is looking at me directly. So I'm going right to you, Commissioner Sarah. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to take this time to uh, thank some of the residents that reached out to us regarding the Coral Springs Swim Club. Uh, we understand um, your frustrations, but also this is a county order. It's been preempted. And we have a, a responsibility to all of our residents to do what we need to do to keep everyone safe. And I know that everyone wants to get back to normal. And you heard from some previous commissioners about you know, the level of frustration, but uh, the pandemic is still with us and we have a lot of steps to still take. And although we would love as a commission, I mean, I'm sure each one of us uh, would love to get back to what we considered um, our past normal. Uh, you know, we need to stay together. We need to stay focused. Uh, and we also please need your understanding that we're making decisions to uh, keep uh, not only your children safe, but the adults around them. So uh, we will work with the county uh, and when appropriate, we will as a commission and work with city staff. It's done an amazing job leading us uh, to make sure that we reopen, but we reopen safely. I also wanted to just um, thank the entire team um, within communications and marketing. Um, you know, I'm kind of new to this, but looking at some other municipalities and the way that they're reaching out to the residents and communicating, and, and I'm not saying uh, anything against their, their approaches, but uh, just okay. tremendous job. Um, one of the things that I hear on a regular basis from the residents is just thanks for keeping them in the loop, keeping them informed, guiding them, directing them, giving them information that they really, really want to ask, but they don't take the time to ask. So, and then also just keeping everything pretty positive and uplifting through a very challenging and difficult time. So to Lynn and the entire marketing communication team, every single one of you guys are amazing. I really haven't seen a department anything like you in my 26, 27 years of professional life. And um, hopefully we won't lose any of you unless you're getting a promotion. Um, <laughs> as far as the class of 2020, uh, <laughs> I wanted to personally reach out to you as a educator myself. Uh, you know, I, I know that you've gone through some challenging times uh, like all of us, um, but to lose some of the events that you were very much looking forward to is in a lot of ways um, really depressing. And, and and also other ways, um, knowing that you're not gonna get that opportunity in the future or ever again is disheartening. So, you know, we are with you 100%. I, I believe uh, the, the video from the commission, uh, once again, done through communications and marketing was recently launched. We hope that uh, you guys uh, enjoy uh, the parades that are upcoming. I wanna congratulate the class of 2020 from Coral Springs. Uh, you guys look great out there absolutely great i mean just all the cars decorated your signs on there all of you guys in your gowns which made me personally happy because i played a little hand in that uh, to get those to you guys uh, you know we um, we care about you we love you we appreciate you being part of our community we hope that you go off to the next stage of your life and you, you know do everything that you want to do and dream big and come back to Coral Springs to continue your legacy here as a business owner, or a resident, a civic leader, or, or you know, just come back as a mentor because we need you. You guys have played a big part in what we do. And a lot of people, you know, thank the adults, but and I thank you guys because you guys are young adults and the culture that we have in this community has really been built in a big way because of you and the you know a peaceful protest that we had yesterday many of you guys were there 
and it just made me so proud to be a part of it because in this city, despite the fact that we have had some protests across the country that didn't turn out so well in the end, uh, in Coral Springs, there's a culture and you guys have been a part of that culture. And uh, for you to come out like you did yesterday at the protest and, and show your support for all lives, black lives, white lives, police lives, I mean, I go on and on and on. It, um, it showed me that uh, your schools, the, the administrations, the teachers, and thank you to Commissioner Simmons for his part in that and all the support staff, you know, they've done a good job with you, but your, your families have done an even better job. So, you know, I just wanted to close by saying that um, despite the fact that we're not going to unfortunately, potentially, and I say potentially, be able to congratulate you on stage. Um, please know that our community really, really cares about you, loves you, and uh, just go off, make a difference, and uh, know that you'll always be part of our Coral Springs family. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Great words. Commissioner Simmons, would you like to go next? Uh, yeah. So I have a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Frank, uh, could we get an update from our federal lobbyist, or I guess Bob, maybe, um, on kind of like what they're doing or what their focus has been, um, you know, right now? Sure. Uh, we, we have, uh, if uh, we have the workshop coming up on the 10th, okay. we can give you a full update then if you like, if you right, like yeah. it sooner or I can get it to you sooner. No, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it's coming up on the 10th, then that's fine. It's a couple of days. Away. Unless Bob, are you prepared to do it? Do you, do you have a, are you prepared to give a quick overview now or would you need till the 10th? Well, I can give you a, I can give you a quick update just some of the things that I've been tracking if that would help you commissioner no I, I can wait till the 10th it's not uh, I mean you know it's the federal government it's not like they make decisions every other day well <laughs> but anyway um okay so that's fine I can wait then till the 10th. okay um I guess Frank I, I have a question for you as well because I'm just just curious trying to understand so when will we not be under I guess the a city, a state of emergency, or, you know, when, I guess, will we draw down from that? So uh, once the uh, the county and state drop their state of emergencies, we will, right. uh, we will likely follow. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, and uh, congratulations to all of the seniors, um, you know, in our, our city and neighboring areas, uh, you know, for pushing through and pulling through. Uh, and definitely shout out to all of the teachers uh, that, you know, I had to pull it through uh, these last, uh, you know, two months, two and a half months. It's been, uh, it's been a whirlwind. And so it was pretty cool today, um, you know, standing up there as a teacher at Coral Springs High School uh, and us doing that graduation uh, parade uh, with the students. I think they love that more than probably the traditional uh, setting. I mean, as soon as it finished, I had two of my fellow teachers lobby me already to say, you know, let's do this again, <laughs> again. Um, and so I just think it was, it was just really good to see them. Um, you know, some of the kids were crying and just, you know, you just don't know what some of these students have been through over the last four years. I mean, I was talking to one of the administrators and you know, I'm going into my fifth year and I was like, every year there's been some type of calamity uh, since I've been teaching. I was like, I don't know, you know, Commissioner Sarah, I don't know how you all went decades, uh, you know, doing this uh, because every year so far as I've been a teacher, it's been, it's, 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 there's been some difficulties. And so, uh, you know, it, it's really good to see these kids graduate. And today it was interesting because um, the kids graduating today were my first 10th graders that I, you know, I had when I started teaching high school. And so it was cool to see some of them, um, you know, push through. Uh, I wanted to ask about the two resolutions I asked about, uh, I asked support for last commission meeting. I know that I've had conversations um, with Melissa Heller and I, and I know um there was some kind, I got an email um, from, I think Sherry was working on it or something like that. So I just wanted to get an update on those. That was yes. a resolution. Uh, go ahead, John. Yeah, so it was the anti-hate speed resolution. Yes. That was um, drafted and adopted. It may have even been signed, uh, but it, that was a draft and adopt. So that, that is um, more than likely it's it's okay. either signed or, or, or Mayor, you'll see it if you haven't already. I don't know if you remember Mayor. Uh, if you signed a resolution, a couple of resolutions recently. But well, that, it, there's nothing blocking it, so it's drafted oh. and adopted. So. Okay. We'll provide it to the commission as soon as it's executed. Okay. And then I think um, I think there was something else. Uh, I think I 
acts for us to urge, um, you know, better, I guess, better collaboration uh, with local governments um, and the county and the state as far as uh, receiving funds to help offset the impacts of COVID-19. Yeah, so there's been a couple different things on that. Uh, the the League of Cities is currently working on that, uh, as, as well as the uh, Broward County City Managers Association. Um, they there's actually been a task force that was uh, convened by the uh, Florida League of Cities that is is uh, working on that to try to get funding from the state. Um, so Melissa, did you have something else? And I saw you on mute for a second there. Language was added to the resolution we were already working on um, specifically to address that collaboration aspect. So that language is within the resolution as well. Okay. Well, Commissioner Simmons, both of those resolutions have been drafted and are awaiting the mayor's signature. Okay, awesome. Uh, and then I guess my last question for you, Frank, um, actually not my last, but second to last, uh, the mobility project in Turtle Run um, I've been getting some calls and things about that, and um, I actually got with the MPO, and they kind of gave me a timeline of, you know, this entire project, and I, I'm just curious of where we are as a city or staff with it, because, um, you know, every other city that, because this was entered to, as, this was entered into as an agreement between us, Coconut Creek, I think, and Margate, and, you know, Coconut Creek and Margate have pulled out, and they've been out for years, uh, and I'm just curious as to why, I guess, we're still moving forward with it on our end. Um, I know there are people in Turtle Run that aren't you know, they'd, they'd rather not have that because there are some residents uh, where they're going to have, you know, uh, I guess, you know, space taken away from them and things that need to be replaced, but FDOT's not going to replace it for them. You know, they're going to have to be taxed or replaced. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to where we are as a city on it, if every you know, other city kind of moved, pulled, out, pulled out of that agreement. Yeah, I'd, I'd like Rich to give us the uh, answer to that. I know he's having some uh, some communications issues earlier. Rich, are you uh, able to, or Susie, able to bring us up to speed on that? I am not aware of it entirely at this point. Uh, I know it's been in place for a long, long time, but I can find out for you and we can get back to you maybe at that same June 10th time. Is it okay to owe you that answer? Or answer yeah, question that, that, that works. That works. I think it's just important that we talk about that because, you know, we clearly have residents unhappy about it and other cities have not in agreement anymore. It's kind of one of those things like, you know, well, why are we kind of, you know, still doing it? So I, I would love for us to go through that. All right. Yeah. And I'll have to personally get brought up to, uh, to speed on that I'll one as well. Forward you, I'll forward you all the, I'll forward you, Frank, the email that I got Please. from uh, the MPO and we can take a look at that. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get up to speed on, on that. Okay. And so um, thank you to everybody that uh, came out to the protest yesterday. I mean, originally it was two students, you know, who just wanted to do something out of the kindness of their heart. And I actually reached out to them just to make sure that, uh, you know, they had some support, you know, from the commission and just kind of, you know, being a, a leader in the city, being a black leader in the city. Uh, I wanted to kind of make sure I helped them out as well. And so, you know, myself, Nancy Matera and a few of our, friends from around Broward County kind of came up to help the kids have like a real program and kind of have this thing moving, but also to have people that have experience with this to support it so that it doesn't become something unmanageable, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, so we don't have any incidents or things like that. You know, I hate that so much of the conversation has been about, you know, the looting and the violence and things like that, you know, and, you know, and I am truly sorry to those business owners that have to, have to suffer through this because those people, um, that may have been going into these situations may not really have necessarily cared about the issue or the message. They just wanted to go out and, you know, see things burn. And, um, you know, for me, it's important that we really focus on the issues and we focus on what matters. Uh, we say Black Lives Matter because, you know, tragic events, time and time again, institutional biases, um, sometimes the protection and exaltation of, you know, races show us time and time again that our lives are, sec are second class. And that's not fair, right? I, I love this country. This is my home. I don't know any other place. I wasn't born in any anywhere else. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. And, you know, to constantly see in the news and just in, in the courtrooms, in policing, and just general society and life, that if you're a Black person, you get to be treated a different way because you're Black, which means less than. You know, I have written and spoken about 
the fact that as a country, we have failed to square with the worst aspect of our history. America's original sin is slavery. And I'm not trying to just take it to that, but just the fact that we won't own, truly own up to that. The fact that we denied that racism is, exists for so long, the fact that we have protected white supremacists is feeding into all these issues that we're seeing today. And when you literally have protests in 50 states, the entire United States, what does that say? What does that say? That means that we have, we have the failure to listen, the failure to act is now coming due. And so there are people out there that are protesting because they're tired. And what's worse is that those same issues that we're protesting against are being reinforced with the way some police officers have responded during these protests. What we saw happen this past weekend, even people that are just begging for everybody to stop, they're still somehow being injured. It's, 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 it's a problem, guys. And I'm challenging the city. I am challenging the city. I'm challenging our police department to look for creative ways to show people in this community that you have their back right? That you have their back, that you understand that it is time to really make those changes. Because when people are in, in trouble or are in danger or are in need of something, they look to us to provide that. And I want Coral Springs to provide that. Our protest, even though it was met with some of the worst comments that I've seen, even though our protest was met with fears and things like that, and I was constantly reassuring people that everything would be okay, that everything would work out, we show the world how you do it. And that's what Coral Springs is about. And so I am challenging you to continue to push the envelope. Words are cool, words are cool. And I appreciate many of you calling me and, and, and asking how I'm doing. I, I truly do appreciate that because quite frankly, I am tired. I am tired. But I'm asking you to do more than just rhetoric. I am asking you to push yourselves and figure out ways to show that you are gonna be there for people in this community. You know, I had someone email me and say that they, their neighbor has been charged and arrested with stalking them because they are racist, period. Charged with stalking them. And even, even looking through the window, peeping in on their, their, their little girls as they go to the pool. What do we have to protect that family now? Because they've been going through this for seven years now. And yeah, you can call the cops and things like that, but how many times have, have officers been called and called and called, but then still something happens to people, right? So, you know, and that's just one instance. There are plenty of times that happens here in our city. And I know people have said, I saw a few other comments. We don't have those problems in Coral Springs. Yes, we do. They're everywhere, unfortunately. And so I, I really am tasking you all to, 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 to really think of different ways to show that, you know what, the time has come that we do need to change, all of us, in every single way that we can, to show better representation, to show that Black lives do matter, to show that we aren't second-class citizens, and to show that the worst aspect of our history is gone and we are done with it. I'm just, I'm, I'm and I'm thankful, I'm just really thankful that we had a good event yesterday, and I'm, you guys don't understand what that can do for folks. Allowing, sometimes people just need to vent. Sometimes people just need to shout. Sometimes people just need to yell. Sometimes people just need to chant. Sometimes people need to see people that look like them feeling the same anguish and pain that they are and coming together to see this moment through. I'm done with my communications. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll just share one thing at this point. Uh, Commissioner Simmons, thank you very much for your leadership, uh, for being vocal, for being calm. Uh, and for sharing what you just did. And I, during my time there, for me, the connection amongst everybody there was palpable. It was an extraordinary experience. It truly was. And I appreciate your leadership for that effort. Absolutely. And, oh, and if I may, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. Thank you for saying that. And I, I just, I wanna say to the police department, thank you uh, for showing up and helping. I know uh, it's interesting to go and help out at an event where you're going to hear very negative comments about your profession, but I hope that you all were, you know, professional enough and mature enough to understand that, you know, it's not you, right? It's just the entire institution, and it's just the the fact that for decades upon decades upon decades, I mean, you guys have seen the films, the old black and white films of 
you know, officers in Alabama and, and you know, re releasing, releasing dogs and water hoses on folks and things like that. And, you know, at this point, it's just like, you know, enough is enough. But I am appreciative of you being out there. Uh, Deputy Chief Brad McKean, I, you are just a great man. And I say that because when I asked you to not speak, you didn't take that as, you didn't take that as a shot to your ego or anything like that. You understood exactly what I was asking for. And I am, I'm very appreciative of that. I, I mean, I already respected you, but I definitely look at you uh, a, a lot more different now today too. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Simmons. Who'd like to go next? Okay. All right, Vice Mayor, you're up. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Commissioner Simmons. I definitely wholeheartedly agree with you. I do want to thank staff and all of the city volunteers who volunteered for the food drive, although it has come to an end. <laughs> Um, like you, other houses of worship that are trying to continue this program, but I was just so proud of the city's efforts and I just want to make sure we recognized our volunteers and employees. I believe that our COVID testing site is coming to an end this Friday and it's still available from 8 to 4.30 if you call for an appointment for 954-412-7300. I do want to remind you that this event is outdoors, so dress appropriately. And I wanna congratulate our graduating seniors. Although life is not very traditional or normal, it is important that you know how proud we are of you. And it is such an honor to participate in your celebrations and your graduations. I know your families are proud of you as well. I also wanna remind everybody to continue to fill out their censuses. We um, are in the high 60 percentile range, but we need to get higher. I remember that this helps your city government for funding over the next 10 years, and that's www.my2020census.gov. And I also want to thank everybody for continuing to support our local businesses in your takeout orders. Although there are many restaurants that are starting to open up for inside dining experiences, and I believe you can find those listed on our economic developments website. I think it's coralspringsedo.org. Um, just Google Coral Springs Economic Development. <laughs> and, you know, just to emphasize what Josh said, that we are all one, regardless of color. And every one of us wants what's good and what's great for the city of Coral Springs. If you need to reach me, I'm at 954-998-4186 or Joy Carter at coralsprings.org. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Vignola. Um, I, I just want to um, echo Commissioner Simmons um, on, on a few items. One, I mean, I think uh, everybody, um, if you have a soul, you feel horrible about what happened to uh, George Floyd. Um, you know, a couple of years ago with the National League of Cities, I went to um, Little Rock, Arkansas. And growing up in Coral Springs, I, I personally did not see uh, a lot of racism um, in, in our community. Um, I will tell you, going to, going to Little Rock and going to Little Rock Central High School and uh, hearing from Elizabeth Eckford of the Little Rock Nine, uh, I met with her and spoke with her. And her, you know, for those of you that don't know her name offhand, um, she was the young lady that sat there on the bench with everybody sitting there yelling and screaming at her. And she shared her story. And, um, you know, for me, seeing that in the history book, um, you know, and then meeting the actual person, the human being um, that was the little girl sitting there on a bench. And she explained that she sat there in front of the, the news cameras and things because she darn well knew that if she did not stay there in front of all the media, um, her safety was in, in um, no, she, she honestly thought someone was going to take her life. Um, she shared that, that that pretty dress that she had that uh, uh, you, you see in the photo, when she got home, she was able to wring it out with the amount of spit um, that uh, uh, people I, I guess spit on her. Um, and, and, you know, I, I understand the frustrations and we're talking about decades later, 1957, when this took place was the year my parents were born. And to see that we're still dealing with uh, racial issues in this country is disgusting. Um, I want to thank the people that came out and protested and protested uh, safely and, and letting their voice be heard and saying enough is enough. Um, but, but, you know, I want to thank them for, for being respectful of everybody in the, in, in the community and, and doing this the right way, both at the, the protest on Heron Bay um, and over there in, in downtown Coral Springs. Um, 
I also want to thank our, our police department and all the different uh, staff members that, that went ahead and provided a safe opportunity for this and for, for being involved and showing the fact that, you know, as, as cops in our community, you're, you're fed up with this too. Um, you know, Deputy Chief McKeon, I think, did an absolutely amazing job through this um, and, and, and all our police officers. So I want, I want to thank them. Um, I want to um, send my condolences to Chief Perry, um, who had a death in the family. And uh, we love you. We miss you. Um, but you built a, a great staff here and, and they're doing an excellent job in, in your absence. That's um, from all of us. That's definitely from all of us, Chief. Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and then um, the the parades, uh, the graduation parades, to, to shift a little bit with that. Um, you know, the uh, today being out there for Coral Springs High School, I, I thought that went as well as can possibly be. Um, again, PD and, and all the staff working to do these uh, events on uh, making it happen as best as we can and as safe for everybody as possible. I thought today's parade was awesome. I look forward to the other ones. It's, it's kind of weird. I've uh, nine years. I've gone to every graduation in the city. Uh, from beginning to end and and um, by the end of this week I guess by Saturday there'll be 50 of them for me and to think about how these kids are going to go out there and change the world so hopefully their kids won't have to live in the world um, and deal with some of the issues that that we're still dealing with here um, I wanted to let the commission know that I'm thinking we're, we're kind of thinking about doing teen political form uh, potentially Monday um, I texted Frank about it earlier, not sure, um, like earlier during this meeting. I'm not sure if it's uh, available for everyone, but just wanted to give you an idea. We, I think schedule wise, we'd have to do this in the next week, um, but we, we canceled that event and wanted to postpone it um, with everything happening out there. We didn't want kids to choose whether they want to go out and voice their um, concerns at the protest over in Heron Bay or, or go to team political forum. So, um, yeah. If anyone's Mr. got Vignola, um, I'll have an answer for you by the end of the day on that. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, with that, if anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out to me on my cell phone at 954-632-7544. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. So I also want to wish my congratulations to all of the graduates. Uh, you guys have been through so much. Um, you are going to be more resilient than most people um, in a lifetime because of what you've been through. And uh, here you are going through these parades, which are certainly helpful and a uh, great, great alternative to not having a celebration like it is. But I know a lot of you would like to have something different. Uh, walk across the, straight, the stage and have your family and your friends shout for you. Uh, so I know there are better times ahead for you all. You know, so many times we talk about you as our future uh, for many, many years. Uh, I don't just think of you as our future. I think of you as our present. And uh, what Mahek and Cheyenne did yesterday, uh, starting this protest peacefully and engaging with uh, political leaders, uh, including Commissioner Simmons, engaging with our city staff and uh, working things out in such a way that it was safe for everybody and such an incredible way uh, for the speakers to express themselves, the protesters to express themselves, and for us to hear, uh, not just as a community, uh, not just as the city of Coral Springs, but your protest that you started, Cheyenne and Mahek, um, and you are young people. One of you was a senior at charter school and uh, the other one, I believe, at FAU or FIU, uh, but you did a great thing uh, for well beyond our community. One of the reasons is, you know, we're at this, uh, I'm going to call it a perfect storm. Uh, here we are still in the midst of a pandemic. And then we have George Floyd uh, being murdered uh, because of the color of his skin. And then we have looters which are, I distinguish from protesters, uh, just adding a lot of fuel to the fire. Uh, it's, a, it's probably the toughest time in all of our lives. And here you are, Cheyenne and Mahek, getting together to share a solution for some things that are ailing all of us. You even had the details of having masks for people that needed it. Um, and I appreciate the police presence and the distance and the listening 
and the support that you all showed uh, um, when people were sharing with me about their concerns about the protest prior to it, I, I listened to them and I thought many of them were valid concerns, uh, but like you, Commissioner Simmons, I was confident that all those concerns would be addressed and they were. Uh, I was not surprised uh, that we did not have violence, that we did not have looting because we live in a very unique community. Uh, a lot of people that care, a lot of educated people, a lot of, a lot of just heart-based people and to be a part of the protest yesterday was a very special thing, I think, for all of us. Uh, we need to make change. Like a lot of the speakers said, uh, those, change ha those changes have to happen now. I will be holding uh, special office hours this Friday at 4 uh, to engage in a conversation about race. I invite anybody that wants to attend to attend. Uh, we'll have details up uh, sometime in the next couple of hours. Uh, it's important for this discussion to move forward. Uh, one of the things, I forget who said it, might have been you, Commissioner Simmons, you know, words are great and they're helpful. Uh, and words and actions combined is really what's going to get the job done. Uh, so Black Lives Matter, we need to listen, we need to hear. I have not been afraid to jog because of the color of my skin. Uh, you know, I, I am Jewish and I had a very difficult time ever really wrapping my arms around the Holocaust. It took me to my early 20s to be able to actually watch a movie uh, about the Holocaust. So in many ways, I, I understand where you are, Commissioner Simmons, uh, and people that, uh, you know, are black. We, we need to do more. We need to do better. And I think we have set a great example here in Coral Springs with the protest that had, I don't know, at least 400 people there. And we had our police in force, um, you know, protecting from the perimeter and, and supporting the protest as opposed to interfering with it. So I just want to say thank you to everybody, including Nancy Mateo, uh, the other leaders from the Black Lives uh, Movement, uh, you again, Commissioner Simmons, the young people, Pastor Hughes, uh, Pastor Oral, Bishop Oral Walters was there, uh, the clergy coalition of Coral Springs and Parkland was a part of it. So these young people, they were able to really assemble quite a great team. And we couldn't have the safety we do without the cooperation of our community. So my hat's off to all of you here in Coral Springs. Uh, truly, pleasure to be a part of. And it also gives hope, not just to our community, but other communities that can see, hear about, read about a peaceful protest. I know that that's possible. Um, Commissioner Simmons and I had attended a Florida League of Cities meeting together about a year ago, and uh, one of the meetings that we had attended talked about something called the Village Square. And the Village Square, the timing couldn't be better for us to implement this. And uh, Frank, I'm asking you again to take a look into this and to see if we can do it as a city. To make a long story short about the Village Square, my understanding of it is it started in Tallahassee. And it's a group of not like-minded individuals, uh, often people with different ideology, where they have respectful dialogue, and that's the rule, that's the ground rule, is respectful dialogue about our differences. Uh, and I think we need to input that. We talked about it at a customer-involved government committee meeting, and I'd like us to look into it and also discuss it further at the next workshop. So if we can put that item on the agenda, I'd appreciate it. And um, if I can have the support of my colleagues to put that on the agenda, I'd appreciate that. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, I, remember, I remember that one as well. And I also uh, was hoping that was something we could do. So, uh, yeah. Great. Thank you. And, it, and ironically, the name of the complex where the protest was yesterday is the Village Square. So, uh, you know, some things are, are meant to be. A couple of other things before we move on. Um, you can reach me on my cell anytime. Uh, I may not be able to get back with you right away, but if you need me, you can call me at 954-494-9872. During COVID, I've had office hours every Friday. They're typically from 12 o'clock to 1.30, and those office hours can be set up with our executive assistant, Luam Jermay, at 344-5906. 
Uh, I saw, and maybe I just missed it, but we did put up the sign for Mayor Campbell. And uh, I happen to be here in my office. Uh, I have Mayor Campbell on my desk uh, every day as I fill out his term. I think about him practically every day and his family. My prayers go out for his family all the time. And uh, I'm so glad we have the, the drive named after him. And I hope we can have a celebration somehow, some way, sooner than later, and, uh, and let his family know how much we appreciate them, especially Lynn, to be able to give a sacrifice she did for Mayor Campbell, Senator Campbell, to do so much for our community for so long. So Frank, if you can uh, give us some feedback about that in the near future, I would appreciate it. And maybe anything would have to wait for months or indefinitely, uh, but I would appreciate it. Um, let's see, graduates. Oh, uh, two people I'd like us to recognize. One is Amy Moret. Amy Moret started a page on Facebook called Adopt a Senior uh, here in Coral Springs and Parkland. And through that program, over 1,000 seniors have been adopted by typically strangers that have given them a goodie bag and kind of made their graduation special and her being able to touch so many lives in such a positive way and connect that if we can recognize her, I would appreciate that. Any objections to that? Okay, great. And the other person I'd like to recognize, and I'm not sure if she lives in Coral Springs or near Coral Springs, but I've mentioned her before. Her name is Shelly Sitton, and she started something called the Pandemic of Love. And through this time, she's helped make, I think, over 50,000 connections between needs and resources to fill the needs. And I would like to highlight that kind of good work during these difficult times. Uh, and I'd also like to recognize the two youth uh, that started the protest and formulated the protest yesterday. Um, so if we can do that, I would appreciate that. Any, any comments or objections on those requests? Great, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, you know, lastly, I just want to say um, I feel completely blessed to work with this team, to be part of this community, uh, to have Frank, you as our city manager at this time. I've shared it a few times and I'll share it again. I think all of the leaders that we have in place here at the city, uh, Chief McNally, Chief Perry, um, Robert Curnow, Alex, you all are the right people at the right time. Um, and I feel that way about our team here on the commission, including you, Vice Mayor, Commissioner Simmons, Commissioner Vignola, Commissioner Sarah. Uh, we have differences here and there, and we're respectful. I think we are a great team, and, and we are part of a great city. And while things are very tough for many, I believe that we are coming together and I believe we do have a lot of unity in the community and we'll continue to find solutions to what just happened uh, in our country, to our country, uh, to George Floyd and all of us. So thank you very much for your time. I'm gonna, and, and listening. Uh, we next go over to city manager's communication and we have number 12 proclamation of code compliance appreciation week. Um, Mayor, before I, uh, before I get into that, um... On behalf of the city and, and, and all the employees, we just want to, uh, you know, comment on, on a couple of things. You know, it's, it's all been said already, but George, George, George Floyd's senseless death while being placed under arrest in Minneapolis is something that has left an everlasting mark on our nation and on our community. The incident is inexcusable, and it's frankly disgusting, I think, as Commissioner Vignola said earlier. Um, the expectations that you have that i have and that chief perry has for our police department are well known to the men and women that serve this community every day uh, the primary role of police officers is to protect others while ensuring their own safety to assist those in need and keep the community safe we understand that sometimes when dealing with with someone who's being uh, uh, arrested while committing a serious crime there is a uh, a need to use force. However, once that officer is ensured their safety and the safety of the community,
they have a duty and an obligation to also ensure the safety of that individual that they've just placed under arrest. At no time should an officer go beyond what is needed to achieve the safety part of this equation. Being a public servant is a privilege. With my background, I've always felt that and I will continue to feel that. The community we serve in all capacities as public servants depend on us for us, for, for us to be there for them in their time of need. Treating everyone fairly, fairly and equally it, with courtesy, respect, and professionalism is not an option. It's, it's an expectation and it is something that we live up to or we try to live up to every day in the city of Coral Springs. With that being said, the death of George, how it happened and other incidents of brutality have led to a movement for change that you all have commented on. A demand to be heard and this change must be achieved through peace, not with violence and not with criminal activity. Over the past two days, our police department and other city staff have assisted in three different peaceful protests that have taken place. I'm very proud and pleased with the preparation that has took place in protecting the peaceful protesters and the community at the same time. I'd like to thank those that came out to hear, to have their voices here heard. I'm sorry, I'd like to thank those that have come out to have their voices heard and to be heard and for the way they conducted themselves and how passionate they are to see this change happen and to do so in a peaceful manner. With all that, it's important to remember we're still amid a worldwide unprecedented pandemic. Uh, I'd like to brief the commission and, and the community on that quickly. Um, the state is up to about 59,000 cases. Uh, the testing returns at this point have gone up, meaning we're up to about 4% of those tests that are now coming back positive versus 2.5% a week ago. We're averaging about 850 new cases per day over the last week in the state of Florida. We were at about 570 for the week before. Broward County, approximately 7,300 cases are, uh, are current in Broward County with a 2.7%. Uh, return rate this week versus about a 2% return weight rate last week. We're averaging 71 cases a day over the this week, uh, opposed to 60 per day in the past week. So the trends are starting to go up a little bit, but we'll keep an eye on them to see what that means. City of Coral Springs is just under 300 cases. We continue to partner with the Florida Department of Health on testing. Anyone can be tested free of charge, no doctor's referrals, no symptoms. All you have to do is make an appointment by calling 954-412-7300. And we'll be testing through the end of June with the Department of Health. We will reevaluate that um, at that time to see if we can continue the testing uh, from there. We are planning a blood drive that will come with antibody testing for free on June 13th, which will take place on the old city hall site across from uh, the new city hall. We're finalizing the site plans and we'll share that information uh, with the community. Our special events team is uh, you know, uh, planning a new way to celebrate 4th of July uh, with, with under the confines of the current pandemic. Uh, the city will be hosting a city parade that will have uh, just city vehicles from different departments going throughout our communities um, to celebrate our nation. Uh, we'll have more on that to come, including a route and timeline so folks know when the parade will be coming by them. I'm very happy to announce the Connecting with Local Businesses Grants and Loans Program broke the million dollar mark uh, this week. Uh, as you know, we're committed to helping our business community in navigating this crisis. Uh, from the Coral Springs Back to Business Program you just approved, to Connecting Business with Small Loans and Programs. We've uh, assisted 134 businesses, of which 64 of them have, re have received almost $1.1 million in funding. Um, that's just, that, that's really a, 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 an, a, an incredible story. Uh, I wanna congratulate the class of uh, 2020 along with the rest of our staff. We know the graduates uh, had a little different year this year, let's uh, to say the least. Uh, but however, we're, we're very proud of them. 
We wish them well. We know that they will have great impacts in our community in years to come. Great accomplishment, great milestone. Finally, uh, if we don't have enough on our plate, um, we are kicking off hurricane season. Mm -hmm. So I would like to remind our community to please have your hurricane plans in place. Please have your hurricane supplies ready to go. If you need any assistance on that, um, we will uh, be happy to assist anybody in, in any information. I know our website's in, in emergency mode right now, but I will ensure that uh, if it's not already been done so that we can have the link to our emergency management guides put up so folks know what they need to do uh, when it comes to hurricane preparedness. Um, Mayor, uh, as you mentioned, um, number 12, if we were in person, uh, we would be bringing up our code compliance officers to recognize them for code compliance week. Uh, we've had a lot of weeks that have passed uh, since we've been virtually meeting. And uh, so uh, I would just like to, to recognize our code compliance division. They're, they're an awesome group of, of men and women throughout this pandemic. They've been in, instrumental in working with our police department and fire department to ensure emergency orders are adhered to. The safety of our public is paramount. Uh, they visited ALFs to provide important information. They educated businesses and residents about the orders uh, and, and just have done so much more. This, this group has truly pivoted what they normally would do on a daily basis. So I'd like to thank them for their efforts throughout this crisis and their efforts throughout their regular roles uh, and duties of, of, their, of their daily actions. So, um, if, if uh, we could just, uh, you know, if you see any of our code compliance officers, just thank them for what they do on a daily basis. Well, we'll be happy to do so. And we'll um, give that credit to. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and, and then uh, Catherine's going to give us just a quick update on our carios. It's something that, that crossed over from our last workshop. We ran out of time. So uh, she'll come on and just give a quick update on that and what that looks like. And, um, and then I have one more thing and I'll be done with my comments. Great. All right, good afternoon. And yes, I will try to be try to be brief on this. Thank you very much, Matt, for bringing that up. At a workshop in January, we spoke about our city's mission, strategic goals, and an update on our KIOs from 2018 in the first quarter of 2020. And at that time, I communicated we'd have a deeper dive um, at our April retreat. However, of course, due to social distancing and needing to serve the public, we were at the height of COVID and we um, understandably canceled that retreat as we needed to be nimble and focus on the active pandemic at that time. Um, but our mission and, you know, next slide, our mission, our strategic goals and our objectives, which we term as our KIOs, the key intended outcomes are all discussed. And a great amount of time and thought goes into each of those setting the targets and forming um, the organization around that. So, um, I bring this up now as we have followed your lead uh, with our mission, uh, the mission being to be the premier community in which to live, work and raise a family, our vision and our strategic goals. Um, next slide. Our key intended outcomes are citywide objectives that we align our resources and funding toward. Okay, so I bring this up now as our budget for 2021 uh, for next year is being formed and departments have submitted their multi, uh, multiple budget scenarios, which my team, the budget and strategy team, along with the city manager's office is forming um, the budget that we are gonna be bringing to you um, at our June 24th business plan workshop. Um, this being the mission goals, our KIOs are that foundation uh, for the budget. So when we're looking at how are we forming this, then, you know, we, we look to you commission, you know, how do you want us to be forming that? You give us the strategy to be able to do that. And, um, you know, this is just kind of a little bit of a, of a check-in um, to do that. So to date, we're halfway through the year. Uh, we know some of what we've achieved. We're 17 of the 26 KIOs, um, as you can see, uh, we have achieved. We're on target with two um, and one KIO, which we've talked about the athletic league participation, um, not hitting the target. We've talked discussed that uh, with you back in January. Um, and then six KIOs are still forthcoming in the latter half of this uh, fiscal year. So we're gonna discuss these in more detail during our strategic planning process in the new calendar year, sometime in February is what we've talked about. Um, but um, I, I believe in 
for the workshop, I gave the um, list of all KIOs. Go to the next slide, please. I'm trying to go quickly here. So this is that big long list. Um, and, and I would say big long list, but just our list um, of the 26 KIOs that, that we are tracking. Next slide. And this is our business model. So you can kind of see where we are in the process. We have the data analysis is that we look at, we're data driven, uh, the citizen and business input. We have had um, the business survey. We have many different modes of being able to receive and the information which forms, goes into forming the strategic plan that you all have stated. Um, and we are right at that mark, that line of policy of operations. We have heard you as um, the commission, and now we're forming that into the business plan, which each one of these um, checkpoint, we do have checkpoints with you. The business plan, again, is coming up at our June 24th um, workshop. And then, of course, um, we have the budget hearings that we talk about for when we actually go to approve our budget. So I just kind of wanted to have a touch base, um, letting you know that you are the foundation. You have given us a framework. Um, in times like this, when we may not have that back and forth being able to touch point as much as what we like, um, you've given us the fundamentals to be able to drive our budget. So um, I appreciate that. Next slide is the last slide. And that is it all. Uh, the first top of that is you can see the the ways to the city mission. It, we link our mission to our employees work plans. The city mission can go um, all the way down to the um, employees uh, through strate forming strategic goals, having key intended outcomes down to the departmental key performance indicators, city initiatives and city operations. This probably is all just complete vernacular at this point, but it really does mean something to all of us um, employees. You can see we have a top-down, bottom-up approach. And what really comes down are some of those images that you see of the our employees doing, doing work. And um, we've had to also continue to be nimble during this time and to adapt, but um, the common mission of why we're here is still there. So um, thank you very much just for that kind of quick touch point on where we are on our KIOs and letting you know that more is coming your way um, at the end of the month for the budget. Thank you. Great. Right. Thank, thank you me. very much. We are having a technical issue, so I believe we should pause. We're having some uh some technical issues with the recording and the participation so if we could pause really quick so we can figure sure. out we'll take a quick recess we'll come back in two minutes okay maybe three I believe they'll be back in two minutes. Fantastic.
we'll uh, keep we'll keep going. Mayor, is it okay to continue? Yes, we're back online. Thank you. All right. So, Mayor, the last item I have is this will come back to you. Uh, I just wanted to make sure the commission knows we're still working on it. One of the strategic priorities that the commission put forth was uh, finding a way to better leverage and use the natural beauty and of the Everglades. Um, staff is, has talked about this extensively and we've kind of come up with a concept to where we believe we can do an Everglades loop. So what does that mean? It means that we have the existing levee that's out just west of the sawgrass. We have the connection at Atlantic already. That loop would then come along on the east side of the sawgrass through Coral Springs, through Sportsplex, connecting into our nature center, coming out of the nature center, connecting all the way up to Wiles Road where a new connection would be made to go under or over or somehow getting uh, you know safely around the sawgrass back to the levee and uh, that is a conceptual design that we have right now that we think would be a tremendous asset to and benefit to the community uh, it would give access to that natural uh, level of beauty and and and, and uh, really just gem that's sitting to the west of us and would allow for residents to uh, to really uh, uh, use that to the fullest advantage as well. It would encourage and invite people to come to Coral Springs for that. So there are multiple stakeholders that have to be engaged for this process. And we're in the process of having some of the preliminary talks with them to see and make sure that it is something that they are uh, interested in partnering with the city on. So we, we have come up with a concept. Um, we want to try to come up with some schematics that we can present to the commission to kind of show what it would look like. But in concept, that's where we are with that overall. And uh, I know uh, Commissioner Simmons was, was one of the ones also that was very heavy on this. And so um, I'll make sure I get this information to him as well. But uh, that is just a general overview of what we're looking at. And we'll have more to come on that in the near future. That sounds extraordinary. I look forward to all the details. Yeah. Vice Mayor Carter looks pretty excited about it too. <laughs> and the good thing is a lot of that infrastructure is already in place. So there would be, it would be really just um, refreshing some of what's already there to, to create this loop, if you will. Great. So we're very excited about that. So that's all I had, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks again for the great job you're doing, Frank. Yeah, well, I appreciate all the work staff does. You know, they, they do a tremendous job. All right, John, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just one item I want to I want to highlight, and it was referenced by Commissioner Simmons. Um, on June 1st, the governor did sign an executive order 20-137, which continued his mortgage foreclosure and eviction tolling. So what that does is for it's targeted for residential tenancies, uh, the no evictions there based on failure to pay rent, um, as well as single family mortgages. The um, moratorium on that being filed in court uh, is been extended now through July to July 1st, 2020. So we'll see what he does then. If, if you recall, he originally entered into that uh, very early on in the uh, end of March, and then he extended it uh, uh, one time prior to this. It was, it was due to end on June 2nd. And then on June 1st, he extended it again to July 1st. So I think he's taking a month-to-month -month look at that as, as moving forward. But uh, that will be helpful to many of our, our, our tenants and residences. Uh, and Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you for uh, the meeting. Well done. Thank you so much. Uh, if one of you wouldn't mind, can you just share an update about summer camps? So sure. summer camps, oh, go ahead, Frank, if you want. No, I was actually, John, if you want to do it from a legal perspective, from an order, and then I'll have Rob come on and just give a brief overview of what staff's working on. Okay, sure. It's certainly been a discussion uh, um, with the with the county on the, on the management level and the attorney level, and um, we have not received anything official, uh, but we uh, do have some um, input or uh, information, I should say that that we we may be able to do it in a very limited manner, 
consistent with uh, face masks and social distancing, but nothing, no order has come out from the county uh, addressing that as of yet, although we're expecting one and the sooner the better. <laughs> That's okay. the legal. Thank you, John. And Rob, if you could just give us a, a quick overview of what uh, you've been working on with staff to uh, both bring the con contract camps back online as well as our camps. Yeah, um, John, we did hear that uh, there's supposed to be an announcement today. I heard from the Broward County Park and Rec Director, Dan West, about summer camps. So some supposed to come out by the end of today. Um, we are okay with opening our, our contractual camps. I don't, we don't have no problem with them. We will, uh, we've already reached out, started contacting them, starting to think what that looks like. They're smaller camps, the ones that uh, we contract out, not the big numbers as we get in, uh, as in uh, our Camp Cool uh, program. Try to work as best as we can with parameters with uh, Bader, Chris Bader, and um, some family daycares and pulling all this information together, how do, how do we handle this and how do we do it safely? Uh, and what, what are the numbers that we can uh, handle uh, in the gymnasium? Uh, so we're not looking at very high numbers because uh, right now we're only allowed groups of 10. They have to be uh, certain, uh, certainly spaced apart. And that 10 also includes the two instructors. So uh, we're looking at possibly 12 groups of 10 uh, that'll maximum fit into the gymnasium. Uh, working on a plan of no field trips, but getting uh, rotating bases to the gym area and also use uh, the outside Mullins to get them outside as much as we can, uh, st still keeping them cool and hydrated uh, as best as we can. So um, we're only looking at maybe 96 kids to up, up to a possible, if we can squeeze another one in. So it's not going to be no more than 110 kids uh, that will be eligible for that. So that's a far cry shy of what we usually do. We, we're always around 550 to uh, 600 kids there. Uh, so there's gonna be a lot of uh, questions on uh, how many we're gonna be able to push away or turn away or accommodate. I hate using those terms, but uh, there's gonna be some people that are gonna need this summer camp that are not gonna be able to participate under these uh, standards. This is what we've put together. We will amend this as we get the county's orders when they came out. But for the site, when they come out, uh, hopefully by the end of today, we have a meeting to, re to review this with Melissa, um, Bill Haggett, Petra, and um, Joan uh, tomorrow at four o'clock. So hopefully the order comes today. We'll be able to have more factual information on that. We're ready to go with staff. Um, um, we just need to make sure that we have enough time to address all the concerns of the families uh, of the camp. And also our instructors are asking, hey, I, before I commit, I want to know what we're uh, up against and all the safety parameters we put in place. So that's what we're working on for tomorrow. And hopefully after our meeting tomorrow, uh, we'll be able to send you something uh, in writing and, and with our recommendations on how to proceed, if we should proceed, and if we do proceed with what uh, uh, standards we need to abide by. Great, thank you very much. Thanks for the report. Mayor, um, while we're on this uh, call, I did get an update from uh, Alex Falcone that the governor announced that the rest of the state <clears throat> will be going to phase two on Friday. Uh, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach have to uh, apply separately for that, so we are not included in that uh, at this point, um, but basically what it does is it raises the capacities a little bit for um, the retail establishments it allows for like the bowling alleys and movie theaters to open at a reduced capacity. And it also allows bars and um, those types of establishments to open at a 50% capacity. Again, Broward County at this point is not included in that, but we will certainly keep our ear to the ground to see uh, if, if Broward County is going to apply for, to be included or not. Okay, great. Commissioner Sarah. Yeah, I just want to go back to the city attorney's communication. Um, John, I just want to thank you and your entire team for just an amazing um, performance, uh, not, not only in the past, but especially during a, a pandemic and everything that's going on in, in the world. You guys are just, um, just doing a phenomenal job. I mean, with emergency orders and reviewing everything that's going on at Tallahassee and keeping us even killed and, and also making sure that we're you know following everything to the letter of the law 
I just wanted to uh, show my appreciation. I know all my fellow commissioners feel the same way along with the mayor that you guys are just a, just an amazing group of uh, attorneys and people. And we just really value everything that you've done to keep us on a straight course during this uh, very difficult time. Thank you. I'll let my staff know. I appreciate it. Great. Yeah, you guys are fantastic. Uh, I believe the meeting is about to adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for a great meeting. And I'll just end it. You know, every now and then we can potentially be reactive. These are tough times. And I would just urge you to pause, take a moment, reflect. Uh, we have a great community here. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Bye, all. Be safe.